Welcome to our lecture online. Here we're going to use a second method to calculate the wavelength of the photon being absorbed when the electron jumps from the first level to the second level in the hydrogen atom. So instead of using the equation that uses the Rydberg constant, we're going to use the concept that the energy of each level is defined as 1 over n squared times minus 13.6 electron volts in a hydrogen atom. In addition to that, we should also realize that the energy of a photon can be defined as Planck's constant h times the frequency, which is h times the speed of light divided by the wavelength, which means the wavelength is going to be equal to hc over the energy of the photon. So that's not a very good, good looking lambda. There we go. A little bit better. So what we're going to do here is calculate the energy of the, of the various levels. So the energy of the first level is going to be equal to, using our equation right here, 1 over 1 squared times minus 13.6 electron volts, which is equal to a minus 13.6 electron volts. The energy of the second level is 1 over 2 squared minus 13, that's a 3 here, 13.6 electron volts, which is equal to minus 3.4 electron volts. So the first thing we did was calculate the energy of the two levels. Now we're going to calculate the difference of the energy. So delta E is going to be equal to, and we only care about the absolute value of that. So we're going to subtract one from the other, E1 minus E2. So in this case, that's equal to a minus 13.6 electron volts minus a minus 3.4 electron volts. And again, we only want the absolute value of that, which ends up being 10.2 electron volts. So that's the energy difference between the first and the second energy level in the hydrogen atom, which means that the photon that's absorbed to make this jump happen has to have exactly 10.2 electron volts which means, therefore, the energy of the photon must also be 10.2 electron volts. In this case, the photon will be absorbed. So from that, we can calculate the wavelength of that photon. So the wavelength is equal to hc divided by the energy of the photon, which is equal to 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 joules times seconds, speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, divided by the energy of the photon, 10.2 electron volts. The reason why I put the units electron volts there is because it's not a standard unit. We have to convert that to joules, and the conversion is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules per electron volt. So this should give us the wavelength of the photon absorbed to make that jump happen. So 6.626 e to the 34 minus times 3 to the 8 divided by 10.2 divided by 1.6 e to the 19 minus equals and we get 121.8 121.8 nanometers which is equal to 121.8 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. Notice we have a slightly different result here. That's simply just a round off error because we don't use exact values for some of these constants. But again, it shows that here's another method in which we can find the wavelength of the photon absorbed or emitted. Now, the reason why I personally like this method a little bit better because it gives you a, bit, a better intuitive feeling of what's going on. Here you can see that there's going to be an energy difference between the two levels which can be calculated by finding the energy of each of the levels and then subtract one from the other to find the difference of the energy between two orbits. And then we calculate the energy of the photon needing to be the exact same as the energy difference. And then from that, we find the wavelength of the photon using the equivalent equation of the energy of the photon being h times the frequency or hc over lambda. So it gives you a little bit better of an intuitive feeling of how that equation actually works. The previous one is ingenious, fantastic, but it loses a little bit of the connection between the physical, what's happening physically, and the result that you get. Here, it's very straightforward, and that's how it's done.